previously on F*** Face. Hello and welcome to episode 100 of the F*** Face podcast. Can you believe uh, we've done this 99 times up until this moment? My name is Jeff Ramsey with me always, uh, with, with me as always, Gavin Free and Andrew <laughs> Panton. Uh, guys, I have a little, a little game I want to play with you for episode 100. Uh, this is for Nick, this is for Nick, this is for Eric, this is for Gavin and Andrew. I would like you all to pick a number between one and three and then post that number in the Discord chat. Between one and three. Between one and three. One, two, or three. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is now I just uh, just to clarify, is this the illusion of choice that was discussed before, or is this unrelated to the illusion of I'm choice? I'm interested to I, I'm interested to see. Okay. All right, the results are in. Uh what Gee, are, can you really? The chat's right there. What are you talking <laughs> about? You want us to just read the majority? Jeff, Jeff never has it open. Okay, I got it now. It wasn't uploaded. What? All right, it looks like number two wins. Oh. Okay. So let me post this. Did that post? Uh, it's typing. You're definitely typing, which is great for an audio show. How does this work? <laughs> How does what work? What do you mean? We just said we've done 99 of these. What does, how does what work? I can't get this image to paste. <gasps> what are you talking there about? Go. There we go, there we go. Oh! You guys picked number two. Okay, Derek, go ahead and start with number two. Fantastic. God I damn I think it. that's the best one. Uh, yeah. Wait, so start. So you are, you're, so could you describe the scene? You're getting a tattoo? Yeah, so there's a, there's a tattoo chair next to me. Ow. <laughs> there's a tattoo chair next to me at my desk. Wait, you're getting that tattooed on you right now? <laughs> I already had, I had, I had a, uh, the, one of the most talented tattoo artists in Austin, Derek, who uh, That's the is, biggest I, one. I, I, tattooed me a few times. I had him. I, we created three f custom f face tattoos. I think we're gonna make. A, mm, that hurts. I think we're gonna make a. Uh, I think. Oh, fuck, this is hard to talk. I think we're gonna make a. Uh, we're gonna make some temporary tattoos. But I went ahead and uh, Derek and I we placed all three of these on my body, and then we figured uh, I would let you guys pick which one I get. Dude, dude, right at the beginning. <laughs> I think I'll probably get all three. Wait, you're doing this, but you keep saying it's hard to talk. You did yeah. this thing for an audio podcast where yeah. it's hard for yeah. you to talk. Like minute one as well. Well, you know, I was facing myself and the podcast and the audience and you. Well, and you don't oh. want to keep Derek hanging around. Oh. Right. Well, I know, you know, uh, Derek's a busy man. He's got he's got shit to do uh, outside of tattooing me on my ribs. On your ribs. Yeah, I'm getting the Don Zimmer uh, Pedro Martinez fight outlined on my ribs right now, <laughs> which is one of the one of the more painful places to get tattooed. I, I might say, might add. So you're sat in your nice desk, you know, nice shelves all around, just with with gut hanging out and a tattoo going on the ribs. Is that what, is that what I'm visualizing? Right, definitely gut hanging out for sure. Here, let me share. Let me see if you can see. I'll share my video. Oh, I'd love to see. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> So there you go. That's what's, that's what's going on right now. What, a, what did what did you guys do for episode 100? We have to have a, we've got to get a screenshot of this for the people. You look like Burt Reynolds in Playgirl magazine. Thank you. I feel like Burt Reynolds in Playgirl magazine. I wish I had his hairpiece. Uh, Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh, I gotta go full screen on this. Are we uh, go for can, it. Can we somehow record this? It's great. <laughs> Fucking do a screen record. I don't. I don't care. I'm. I am recording on my iPhone from behind, so it's gonna. I, I realize after I set it up, it's not gonna look good. But uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, this is what I'm doing for 100. A Andrew, Gavin, what do you guys got? It's so oh, much bigger than I expected. <laughs> yeah, it's we so size. <laughs> It's we so sized large. it down. It, I had made it. I had to make it way too big. Actually, when I saw it, I I shit my pants. Oh, oh my god! So I've never gotten a tattoo. It's hard to speak. I also imagine it's laughing is the thing you would want to avoid. I would assume you just you just want to stay st as still as possible. <laughs> um, it's only it's only it's only hard to speak in certain spots. Tattoos tend to hurt the worst, in my experience, over sh when it's right over bone. Like oh. ribs. Ribs are a particularly oh. tough spot to get it. Um, there's, there's some fleshy parts can hurt a lot, too. 
Uh, chest hurts quite a bit for a boy. <sighs> uh, elbows are bad. Um, uh, yeah, I hear behind the knee is a particularly rough spot. I've never done that. Not looking forward to it. Uh, anyway, uh, what's new with you guys? I just, uh, is there anything, any imagery that Jeff is making you think of Gavin right now? Just when you look at him, is there, are there any, um, any vibes that you're getting from this? I feel uh, like so something Winslet. you would like see on the, the roof of like the ceiling of a cathedral. I don't know why I'm, I'm getting real mermaid vibes from Jeff. <laughs> That's why I lost it. It just feels very Jeff mermaid. Something with the way, the way the hands are. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure. expecting the uh, the hands up on the head, sort of <laughs> keeping the arms <laughs> out of the way of the ribs, sort of pose. Yeah, no, it makes sense, but I just didn't consider it. I was caught <laughs> off guard. Jeff's face clench up when he's talking. <laughs> yeah, well, I, neither of you have ever had a tattoo, so you don't. Mm, no, no, I no. don't know what I would get. Where, so where would you put the, um, where was the pencil going to go? The pencil is on my, like, my right calf. Okay. Uh, okay. And then the Ian is on the inside of my foot. So oh, wow. uh, I'll probably just go ahead and get those two while we're here. So the, the number two, the one that was picked, is definitely in the worst place. Yeah, see, I was hoping <laughs> that you guys would pick a different one and then I wouldn't have to get this one because this is the only bad one. The other two are a fucking, I could do it in my sleep. It's nothing. <laughs> Um, but you're getting a tattoo you didn't want. <laughs> no, I'm not saying I didn't get. I didn't want it. Obviously, I want it. I just didn't necessarily want it right in now. this context. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want <laughs> to be completely covered in tattoos, but I'm not because of uh, I don't know. Uh, it hurts and it's not fun. So you, you, you know, <laughs> I do it sparingly. I'm so glad we went with two. I mean, I, the other visuals I can't imagine would be as good as being as caught off guard as we were with that reveal. I guess I realized for for the audience, uh, what one, two, and three are. Number one is a pencil. It's a number 16 pencil uh, with a bite taken out of it. Number two was uh, Pedro and Don fighting right as uh, Pedro's smushing Don's head. And then, uh, oh, fuck. You can hear the faint buzz of the yeah, tattoo. That was, that was a good spot. Uh, and then tattoo number three is the Ian face uh, looking up standardized nose. Oh, man. It's incredible. I, uh, I feel I'm glad I didn't even attempt. So I had two things in mind for this episode. One of them would antagonize Jeff, so I didn't want to do that. And the other one would antagonize the audience, which also felt rude to do. On such a special <laughs> episode 100. I just didn't want to annoy anybody. So I don't have anything planned. But I know, Gavin, you've had this amazing story that we've been oh, teasing A-plus story. for weeks. Well, well, you've been annoying the audience, Andrew, since you didn't eat the pencil. So what's, what's different now? Well, it's just, you could, trust me, I could take it other levels. We could go to some other places with it. I didn't want to. This is a celebratory episode. Jeff's getting a tattoo. It's good vibes. Good vibes. I uh, I want a new guess at the uh, previously on voice. Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Let's, let's do the the previously on guesses. Jeff, have you thought of a new guess? Is it? Been, go ahead. You're allowed to ask a question as well. Don't forget. You know, you, you had a question and a guess. Oh, okay. Uh, is it uh, is it a public figure? <sighs> uh, no. Okay. Is it someone? Oh, did I ask this last time? Is it someone we've heard on the show before? Did I ask that? Uh, someone you've heard on the show. Could you be a little bit more specific? In Has your, their voice your... been in an episode of <laughs> Face? No. Oh, God. I have not. Oh. And it's been very fun to see the guesses. There have been a lot of posts and different threads about who the voice could be. It's been very entertaining to follow. Is it, uh, my guess will be, it's somebody from My Hubby's Bagels. That's 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 your guess? Your official yeah. guess? No, that yeah. is incorrect. Okay. Is it a descendant of the inventor of the butt plug? You don't get another question. <laughs> you, need to, you need to unless that's who you're guessing. That's my guess. I don't know the ancestry of the butt plug inventor, <laughs> so I don't feel comfortable giving you an answer to that. I would assume no. I would be <laughs> shocked if that was the case, but there have been weirder coincidences with this show. So I don't feel like I could fully rule it out. But I, highly <laughs> unlikely. You guys have to go again next episode. We do. We're still, we're still looking. It's been crazy. Some of the guesses, I am seeing guesses from people that are way more creative than I could have ever come up with. So well, let me ask you this, as not as a, an official question, but just as a conversation. Has anyone in the, com has the comment lever got it right? Nobody has gotten it exactly right. 
Oh. That's interesting. That's interesting. interesting. There, there have been, there's been some people that I'm like, wow, I'm surprised you're that close. But yeah, there has not been a definitive correct guess as of yet. This could t- this rate, we're going to be all the way up to 200 before we get there. <laughs> I feel like you guys asked some great questions and really narrowed it down. It's an unsolvable riddle. I'm going to need a running document, though, of, of everything we know before I make <laughs> this guess. Problem. It's going to be I hard to don't. keep track of. I don't remember everybody you've guessed. Never mind the questions. But yeah. um, my favorite one, I think, is Nick. Some people thought it was Nick. Can you imagine how, how wild of a, a just bad, <laughs> be such just, a lame reveal if it's just Nick. What, what you, what's lame about Nick? Well, it's just he's in every, like, there'd just be such a strange, <laughs> strange thing. And nothing against Nick. Nick is great. I love Nick. Nick's fantastic. But it just teasing, it'd be like if I had you do the voice, Gavin. What a lame reveal that would be. Is it Gavin? Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> is it you? <laughs> that would be amazing if it was. Oh, sweet. My ribs are done. That, that was fucking fast. That was really fast. Already? Wow. Yeah. That's, that's Are you quick. moving straight on? Yeah, we might as well just do the rest of them, right? That was... I mean, it's not, uh, it's not impeding the, the progress of the tattoo or of the podcast at all, is it? I would say no. <laughs> I don't think so. All right. I don't even know if that question was for me, but I'm going to say no, this is great. I I have an update from, we were talking about uh, stuff not arriving for months. That was that West Elm. Oh, uh, I've been meaning to ask that. Yeah. Did Jeff get the basket? Did you ever get your basket, Jeff? Uh, I did. The picnic basket. Yeah, we did. get. Okay. Oh, how was it? Uh, I haven't used it yet, but it's lovely. (laughs) Great. It's uh, it's as advertised. And I got the Dead by Daylight statue delivered. uh, (laughs) When? Last week after having placed the order in. What was it? January 2020? <laughs> Just arrived. And how is the Dead by Daylight statue? Uh, it's good. It lights up. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Eric asked, is that your crazy story? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not the story. <laughs> I don't... Jeff's just walking with the mic in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> just in his box. I mean, I, I'm not in my box or something. I'm in the uh, swim, oh, swim, swim trunks. Swim He's wearing He's the it up. smallest shorts, just walking around his house carrying a microphone. <laughs> this is so insane. These are the swim trunks I wear every day of my life in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> swim trunks. So 80s. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, but, what's, what's, wait, wait, but what's wrong with the 80s? I grew up in the 80s. The 80s were fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're like an 80s footballer. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll take that as the compliment I assume it is. How do you want me to sit for this one, Derek? <laughs> <laughs> I, was so, like, I was trying to think of the thing that we had to be here at the specific time to record this episode because Jeff uh-huh. had booked something. I had no idea what it was. I did not expect this. <laughs> no. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> this is incredible. I'm um, supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> now this angle is so, terrible because it's like it's like we're in bed with you it's like <laughs> i don't enjoy this it's a lot a lot more fun yeah, the other way with the big spoon That's exactly the <laughs> why don't you tell your story gavin uh well i got some visual aids for it so if you can't see the screen i'll wait for you to turn over. Well, what about what I about turn, the I, can look at, I can look over <laughs> is there any update outside of the fact you got it the or statue? Is that just a, yeah. Nope. Just letting you know. I figured I'd let okay. you That was quite a long time, that. though. It was like seven, it was. what, 800 days or something? It was ridiculous. 800 days. It's pretty long. It's not even a thank me later setup. That was just the world. The world just did that to you. Don't even need that business. <laughs> you should turn around and sell it on eBay for twice the cost and say that you... Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there are other people out there that are waiting hundreds of days for their statues. Like you're going to do with your fridge? <laughs> yeah, like I'm going to do with the fridge. <laughs> What did you call it? Profiteering? How many Bo Burnham yeah. vinyls do you have at this point? Three. Still have them? All three? Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you want one? <laughs> I'm not opposed. It's just, I love that you have three. I, I just assumed you would do something with it by this point. I've already sent you something different this week. Did, okay. Did it come through Amazon? Did yeah. you order it all? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Did you reject I'm it? Whoa. Oh boy. Well, I got a call yesterday huh. f- from someone that yeah. it just their call display was ontario which i found very suspicious it was just a region uh and they called and they left the voicemail it was hard to understand like it was breaking up and stuff but they did say i'm from amazon i'm trying to find where you live and i thought i didn't order <laughs> anything from amazon this is suspicious huh so i don't uh did maybe check maybe check the status of that order 
Oh, shit. You should maybe hmm. see, because I don't have it, but I definitely huh. got called twice yesterday from somebody <laughs> listed as Ontario. Uh, oh, well, I was sort of hoping it would arrive in time. Uh, oh, it says shipped. That's all it says. So it might be unrelated. I did get... Uh, to talk about something that will already be well out, I received the uh, regulation listener and comment lever shirts. Ooh, how oh, how I haven't got I haven't gotten those yet. I haven't either. They're yeah, they're great. I mean, they're they're <laughs> they're as designed. They're basic, and they say what they should say on them. So maybe it's that, but that'd be wild if Amazon delivered that. I don't know. <laughs> I'll keep my eyes open though for for the Amazon package. We have a we did a thing. Eric and I did a thing the other day. Yeah, we went out with we had little bros night. Oh my god! I'm so <laughs> glad we're going to talk about this. You did, oh, yeah. How how was Bros Night? Well, the film was amazing, wasn't it, Eric? <laughs> Am- Ambulance might be the best movie I've ever seen in theaters. <laughs> Absolutely unhinged film. I can't believe it exists, and I had such a good time in this empty ass theater. It, like. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I had such a good time. I, I genuinely believe that Michael Bay turns up on set and opens the case of lenses and takes like the 18 mil and the 35 mil, like but all the wide lenses and just throws them into the sea at the beginning of each filming day. Every <laughs> single shot was like up Jake Gyllenhaal's nostrils or like in his <laughs> eye. It's like the guy hates zooming out now. <laughs> Is it a typical Michael Bay movie where the movie ends and then they surprise you with a whole other movie at the end? Uh, I miss I miss the end. I'll be honest. I need to. T- <laughs> I need to piss. Uh, no, it is. I-, I will say it is the most Michael Bay movie I think he's ever made in the way that it looks and feels and moves. It is uh, like it's insane how crazy <laughs> that movie is. From Jeff, there is three minutes of exposition, and then they are like off to the fucking races and the exposition at the beginning is the funniest exposition you can do it is my wife needs experimental surgery insurance provider and then they hang up on him and then he goes time to go to work and it's insane i i i hate getting up to piss especially the first time i've seen a movie but that movie was so freaking long and i accidentally well i sort of miss judged how big a 32 ounce beer was <laughs> and I ordered the counter uh, so by the end of it I was like writhing in my seat I was like oh, this movie needs to end like we're, we must be at the end and then like 20 <laughs> minutes later I was like oh god and uh, so, so I just got up probably what would you say Eric like three minutes before before the credits yeah and then you came back when the credits like started but the credits only like the credits were like so short <laughs> they didn't give a shit the credits were 15 seconds long and then it was like get out <laughs> i i got up probably 60 maybe 65 seconds away from pissing my pants that's the that was the timer i was on and I, it was that stage of piss where it's like your bladder is so full if you could feel the stretch in it and you're almost like waddling and you're trying to like unbutton the, the shorts to, to give it a little bit of freedom. And that's when all of the staff of the movie theater decided they wanted selfies. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like oh my God, yes, but we got to keep moving. I'm going to piss myself. <laughs> so we took like a little waddle run of selfies as I went through. I made it back for the two second credits. But it was a good experience. Uh, Andrew enjoyed a video I sent him of TPG. It was a phenomenal video. It, it delivered in ways, should we like get into the specifics of the context of that video and like leading into it? Yeah. So you guys saw it with TPG, who is, I, I think, in my mind, at least famous on the show as being the you fuck with Hobbs and Shaw guy. Which yeah. is incredible. <laughs> Big fan of him. Gavin and I were talking, what do we think TPG's top 10 movies of all time would be? It has to be a phenomenal list. If you fuck with Hobbs and Shaw, you got a great top 10 list. And we're going back and forth. And Gavin opened with Bad Boys 2. And I agreed. Yeah. I was like, that feels like it would be in the top 10. That's a great pick. We basically just sat there before we went out, like Andrew and I guessing TPG's top 10 list. (laughs) And then Gavin said The Raid 2. And I was like, that's a great movie. I love The Raid 2, but it just, it feels so strange. Like, that's such a strangely specific movie to be in your top 10. Uh, And then Gavin sent me a video of TPG not discussing his top 10, discussing his top two and what potentially might be in the third spot. (laughs) <laughs> Which is amazing. 
is a phenomenal video. If you were to guess, what do you think TPG's first greatest film of all time is, Jeff? Um, I think it's either going to be like The Rock or <laughs> uh, Con Air. Oh, another or, good one. Or uh, Bad Boys 2 would be up there. Maybe Fast <laughs> 5 would be in there. Or it's going to be like Citizen Kane and Sunset Boulevard or something <laughs> like totally like, on Golden Pond. <laughs> something you totally wouldn't expect. You kind of nailed it. His number one, the greatest film of all time from the GOAT is Bad Boys 2. Okay. <laughs> the greatest yeah. cinematic masterpiece of all time. Then his number two, which I, I love I love so much. He's like, for all the film snobs out there, G1, we go in Godfather 1. <laughs> <laughs> he, called, he called the first Godfather G1. G1. He's, then, he's the only person on earth who likes Godfather 1 more than 2. Okay. And then he, he said, this is maybe my favorite part of the video that, that Gavin sent me. He said, okay, now we're going to 3. List really drops off at this point. It's your own top 10. <laughs> what does that mean? Why does it drop off significantly? And then he couldn't decide. It drops off significantly. And then he said, this is in the running for number 3. And it was the Raid 2. <laughs> and his, he said that him and like 20 guys saw the raid too and in the final fight sequence everybody stood up and was watching it and they felt like it was real which is insane that's how much he likes bad boys too he thought he watched a brawl in a theater like it was real life people dying and it's three it's not even three it might be three it's a distant three it's a distant I, I just like three. The, i was pretty much correct on my guesses you to the point where it. It, he was saying everything i said to you and i just i laughed and just stopped the recording because i was like it i've was, got everything i need it was back <laughs> That's to what back. We got. and then we had to go and watch the movie <laughs> oh and then you guys are seeing it in 40x is how it was explained going into it and i was so jealous of like oh, i don't have that available to me i knew eric was having a great time watching it I can't watch it with TPG, sadly, so I feel like I'm missing out on the experience, but just the seats alone, it's like, that's a whole layer I feel like I'm missing. To then learn that you guys didn't even see it in that way. You just saw it in a normal setting. Yeah, what was that about, Eric? Why, why did we go to that one? I, I think, okay, so I will say <laughs> that Tim texted me the next day, and the text just read, bro, that theater, hidden gem, might be top 10. <laughs> so I think he just really likes that theater. But also, I thought we were seeing it in 4DX. Turns out that movie is not in 4DX. That's insane. <laughs> Can that you believe like... Ambulance is not in 4DX? We saw it in a regular theater, and it was the most thrilling time I might have ever had <laughs> at a movie. <laughs> you mentioned those FPV drone shots in 4DX. It would have been no, amazing. I, no, I wouldn't have been able to live tweet the whole. There's no one in that theater. I live tweeted the whole movie because no one was there, and I loved every Did second you really? of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my Twitter that night was on fire. Insane. It, oh, dude, I loved it. I loved it. I had such a good time. And you said that the movie was, the theater was empty? Dude, there were like, how many more people were there in that theater, Gavin? Three? Maybe. Was this opening weekend? Oh, yeah. That was like the day it came out. <laughs> oh, for a, ooh. I want to see it so badly. I need to see Ambulance. I don't want to see it at all. I, the, none, nothing about that trailer looked good to me. It's awesome. It is unhinged. You ha like you have to. I want everyone I know to see this movie. It is. <laughs> it is like there's people who are like, oh yeah, I only watch cinema. This takes cinema <laughs> to a place where I didn't know it could go. It was incredible. I don't. I don't know anything about it. I've somehow avoided like all the trailers. I just know it's an action movie with Michael Bay called Ambulance. I saw somebody make a joke tweet that was like, this movie is crazier than I realized. I didn't know the lead character's name was Michael J. Ambulance. And I had to look up to see if that was true. Like it's the type of movie where if that was true, it wouldn't phase me at all. Like it feels like it could happen. I need to see it. I'm excited to watch it. I was jealous of your, your great evening with TPG. Yeah, I wish you were there. I wish everyone was there. Oh, it would be an amazing experience. I wanted to be in the theater uh, with the Raid 2. Is really, I think, the thing we all <laughs> missed witnessing that live fight. I feel like the thing that Tim explained to us later is that he wasn't sure if everyone else was standing or if he was the only one standing <laughs> believing the movie was real. <laughs> but, but either way, he loved it. <laughs> uh, it's, great. it's a great movie. The Raid 2 is fucking awesome. Amazing fight scenes. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm good. I'm trying to take pictures of my tattoos for you guys. Oh, nice. Is it Wait, done tattoos. Already? You got the second one? I got all three. <laughs> He's Why already got so all quick? three. 
<laughs> He's all done That's 20 incredible. minutes in. <laughs> We're 25 minutes into the episode. <laughs> I've got three tattoos in 20 minutes. Yeah, I, did, I didn't expect it to take all day. <laughs> I didn't expect it to take 20 minutes. <laughs> I was wondering if we'd be able to get all three in. I thought two. All three is wild. I wonder if you didn't say anything, how many tattoos you could get within an hour without us knowing at all. <laughs> That'd be an amazing reveal that you've gotten like 15 tattoos from the beginning to the end of the episode. That, the moment the camera turned on might have been the greatest reveal in oh, face history. Well, that greatest was the funniest reveal thing I've ever seen. In cinema history. <laughs> like, <laughs> there is no reveal that could top that. Just every reveal now, that's all I'm going to think about. That fight <laughs> Jeff on his side with his hands on his head. I guess something else we should talk about, just very briefly, I guess, is uh, there's uh, somebody in the community made a game for us. That's surprisingly what fun. What was that? I saw the link to that, but I couldn't do it on my phone. What was that? It's, uh, yeah, I had to use my, my desktop to play it and just off the browser. Uh, it's a, like a, I don't know how to describe the game, but it's, uh, it's like a, a, it's from somebody named Michael's Game Lab. What was it called? It's called Face Knob Drop, and it's like <laughs> it's a game where like things fall down. So you have to collect, you have to eat burgers, hot dogs, and waffles while avoiding pencils, baseball bats, <laughs> and something else. And you're just moving your mouse like across the screen with an e. And you're controlling an Ian e face, and then there's a no scrumping warning that will appear, and apples will like fall on the screen. And if you hit an apple, you lose life. Like you can easily die from the apples. It's a lot of fun. I started it, got number one in the leaderboard, would talk shit about it, and just have been demolished. People are way ahead. Jeff just posted his tattoos. Wow. These are amazing. <laughs> these, all, these all look so good. <laughs> I like that Ian's looking at the, the duck. I, <laughs> it's a goose. It's the goose. <laughs> and it's close enough that fart hard feels like a thing that Ian could be saying to the goose. Oh, right. Like fart hard is coming out of Ian's mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god, they're all really good. They're such good. Well, there you go. Well, I hired I hired like I said, Derek's one of the best uh tattooers in America, let alone Austin. Uh so when you do it, you do it right. Oh, the pencil. That's amazing. That looks fantastic. What a reveal. Speaking of things that like reveals. Happy, happy 100, by the way. I've never yeah. gotten in 19 years uh since I started or helped start this company, I've never got a a, a, a company related tattoo. These are my first. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, that's so well, my cool. nose is on there. That's, is that just oh, me? Ah, oh, shit. I forgot about that's your nose. True. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's that one. <laughs> that is true. I've only gotten one other company related tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andrew, should we get one? Uh, I'm, I'm not opposed to getting a tattoo. I've just never, never got one. I got a good one for you. It's, it's across your ankle and it just says snap here. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think that would imply it requires snapping and that it's not already <laughs> happened. It's we're already. How are the legs this week? Uh, it's OK. OK. I think it would just maybe like waste of space would be probably a more appropriate. Just useless. <laughs> maybe just useless across different options. We can workshop it. Use and less across. the <laughs> <agenda. laughs> It just looks like use less. <laughs> You know what sucks is all of the advantages that big businesses have over the little guy, like having more access to funding on top of getting better rates and other privileges reserved for the top dogs. If you run an e-commerce business, you probably feel like it's about time people stop treating e-commerce giants better just because they're bigger. And you're absolutely right. That's why ShipStation gives e-commerce sellers of all sizes access to the same deeply discounted rates usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. No wonder ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 sellers. Terrified of dealing with international shipping? Don't be. ShipStation makes it a breeze to ship anywhere around the world, so scale away, ShipStation can handle it. Saving money while making shipping easier? It's a no-brainer. I mean, with all the money I'd save, I could easily start a new sauce empire. It would be incredible. ShipStation doesn't just save you money, but that's a good place to start. ShipStation works with over 45 carriers, easily compare rates and delivery times to quickly find the best option every time. Works with over 300 platforms like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and more to automate processes like fulfillment and tracking so you can save time managing orders. In fact, 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it for as long as they're in business. Don't let the big guys keep all the good discounts to themselves. 
Sign up using promo code FACE for a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com and start saving with every shipment. That's two whole months of discounted shipping absolutely free. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in FACE. ShipStation. Make ship happen. Mellower vibes are a moment away with Dadgrass. They'll take you back to a time when music was on vinyl, books were bought in a store, and hipsters were a style of jeans. And to celebrate the passage of time, they're doing a special collab with George Harrison's estate to mark 50 years since his All Things Must Pass album. Dadgrass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-roll joints are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. Chill out without getting stoned. It's like having a glass of wine and not the whole bottle. And Dadgrass knows you get by with a little hemp from a friend. They've partnered with the George Harrison Estate to create a new CBD and CBG blend and accessories called All Things Must Grass, which pays tribute to the man who always let the good times roll. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 21 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash face. Go to dadgrass.com slash face for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash face. Isn't it crazy that in 2022, we have high-speed internet, celebrities going to space, and electric cars, and yet people are still cleaning their bums the way our Victorian brothers and sisters did, with toilet paper. Step into the 21st century and upgrade your bathroom routine and start washing your bum with Hello Tushy bidets. Because smearing your business around with toilet paper is so 100 years ago. Hello Tushy bidets are incredible. Everybody I know who's gotten one absolutely loves it. It's changed my bathroom routine. They're so easy to install. They're a fantastic product that I would highly recommend. So stop spreading your business around your butthole with toilet paper. Start washing with Hello Tushy bidets. The Hello Tushy bidet attachment washes your bum with fresh water for a way better clean than toilet paper. Simply spray and pat dry. Attaches to your existing toilet, no electrician or plumber needed, installs in less than 8 minutes, cuts down your TP use by 80%, saving money and paper waste. Make the restroom your best room with the complete Tushy system, including the Tushy bidet attachment, ottoman, and toilet brush. Hello Tushy has cleaned over 1 million happy bums. Join them and take care of your business the cleaner way. We want all of our listeners to have clean bumps. Visit hellotushy.com face to get 10% off plus free shipping right now. Tag us and at Hello Tushy on social media so we can celebrate your clean butt with you. That's hellotushy.com slash face for 10% off. Do you ever, um, this is such a weird poll. Did you ever watch that Flat Earth documentary that was no. like popular to you? There was like a really popular Flat Earth documentary and just like it's so ridiculous. It feels like a like best in show type movie but it's a documentary and one of the guys in it is like talking about how marketable um it is and how it's like their secret underworld and he shows this guy a license plate and he's like what does this say to you and the guy says nasa lies he's like yeah but it could also be nasal ice could be ears throat no specialist you don't know <laughs> we're under the record we're, we're, we're read sneaky that's always what i think about just stupid like misreading a thing nobody would read this, read that as nasal eyes yeah, it's like that, that Penn Island website. Was that the documentary where the guy disproved that the Earth was flat in the documentary <laughs> and then decided that his test must have been flawed? I f yes, yes, it was. I forgot about that. I watched that movie. Sometimes when I watch movies, I'll take like notes if I plan on talking about them in some way. I took like 200 notes in that 90 minute movie. It's so absurd and there's so much funny stuff in it. It's a very awkward, like, the, the guy that they're kind of following clearly is in love with this girl that has no interest in him at all, and it's just very, their interactions are great. I wish I could remember what it was called. It's probably still on Netflix. It's, it's dumb. It's a ridiculously stupid movie that is a lot of fun to watch. Should we get reflective on episode 100? Like, what's our, what's our favorite moment from Face so far? Wow. Favorite moment? What's the shittiest moment? The shittiest moment? Oh, wow. Uh, These are tater tots. Yeah, I Tater think post tots, condiments was our, was our all time low. <laughs> condiments is the all time low. That's a great call. That was 
Not just like an all time low for the show. <laughs> Nick like, we're all-time... editing the condiment episode. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's the the all time low for our friendship, Jeff. Without a doubt, like by a lot. So, well, well, so far. So far. <laughs> I don't know where the baseball thing ranked <laughs> as far as your personal. No, I anger. had what the baseball thing was one bad day. Uh, I was way I was I was angry about the tater tots. That is true, <laughs> and it felt like a thing that would linger. We just had to move on. I was bummed about the baseball thing. Uh, I was angry about the tots. <laughs> it was a strange of all things. It was like a religious argument where not only did we view the other side as wrong, we could in no way see how they could view it as right. Like there was no compromise or middle ground. We were, we were so locked in to our definitions. I think my favorite moment so far has, is very recent. And I think it was uh, Andrew's reaction to looking at the beanhole pictures. I just love that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> you just, Nick said you they looked threw like. Up. Oh, it was it was a problem. It's one of the hardest I've ever laughed for sure. I think the hardest not to like pivot away from reminiscing about the show. I don't think I've told this story on the show once. I I laughed so hard one time I nearly fainted, like genuinely nearly fainted. I was playing PUBG and uh, I was playing with some <laughs> friends. And, uh, you know, like, have you ever seen, I know Jeff will definitely be aware of this play, but are you aware of, like the Larry Bird steal Gavin, where it's like, he reads the floor before anything happens. He like sprints to the exact right. Like he just knows what's going to happen and he reads it and he executes it perfectly. Like he no. just, he, he knows the play. It's a fantastic. It's one, it's one of the greatest moments in the history of basketball, but it's like, oh, being, it's basketball. <laughs> yeah, it's a basketball thing, but it's like being in the zone. It's like, he knew what was going to happen. He read it. He fucking predicted it and he executed it. I was playing PUBG and my friend was like in the bottom of this hill and he was getting sniped at from all angles and there's a big tree next to him and he got tagged by a sniper and he's like, I'm down. And so I turn and I see this car and I have my Larry Bird moment of I see like, OK, I'm going to get in the car. I'm going to drive it to the tree. The, tr the car will then be like a barricade for us. I'm going to pick up my friend and we're going to go and escape. This is fucking I've got this. So I get in the car. I hit drive. I immediately run my friend over and crash into the tree at full speed. <laughs> I kill him immediately and crash the car. And I laughed so hard, like all the air shot out of my body. And I felt like I was going to faint. Like I started to go down my head a little bit, <laughs> but I crashed the car and I'm still in a war zone. So like I'm trying to gather my so I'm not fainting while laughing and I'm just getting sniped at from all sides and I'm like I gotta get out of here so I hop in the car and I go but I'm like barely like I'm, I'm fainting I'm like in and out of it as I'm driving the car Could it you was just like not breathe in I couldn't breathe and I just couldn't stop I was just laughing so hard that like the lights were going out and I'm just driving away it was like in a movie where a guy gets shot and he gets in the car and like barely escapes I was almost like, tunnel out. vision yeah I was having tunnel vision it was <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine you just sat intensely at your screen, I, like starting to slump over. If you, that's exactly like my my head went down. I was like holding myself up on my desk with my arms. <laughs> if you would ask me going to my friend, like the odds of this working in the way I wanted it to, a hundred percent. I've never been more confident that anything was going to work in my life, and I immediately ran him over and killed him, and then just crashed <laughs> into the tree because I was laughing so hard as soon as I failed. It's a disaster. Should have saved a clip. I wonder if I have that. I might. I should look. Yeah, you should look for that. That is a great. Um, uh, Nick picked the Nick picked the sewing machine argument. The sewing machine argument is a great one because that was at the end of an episode that none of us were all that happy with. <laughs> we're like, that wasn't that great, and then we ended, and then it was thirty minutes of sewing machine talk that was not at all supposed to be part of the episode. I don't think we were even recording at that point, and if it wasn't for Craig. I don't think we would have had that audio. Uh, I think you, you, talking about your that PUBG incident and making you laugh. One of my favorite memories of the podcast has got to be um, it, before the podcast. It was when I had the idea for the beef bracelet. And then as I was having that idea, I realized I wanted to make a commercial. And so I rode my bike down to the park to film it. And... I I was laughing and I was trying not to laugh out loud, uh, but I was laughing internally at all the people that were watching me ride up and down this path over and over again, doing multiple takes, filming with one hand while I was eating beef jerky off my wrist with the other. 
no hands on the bike and just people <laughs> looking at me just trying to have their lunch while they, before they go back to work like because i was just going back and forth i probably did eight times uh <laughs> just looking like a lunatic <laughs> i didn't know that that's really yeah. funny i didn't realize it took you so many takes well you got to get it just right man it's for it's no. a commercial yeah it's super important too is the yeah, debut of uniform um show it off in the best light what about you eric have you ever had a good time making this <laughs> <laughs> i i love the middle of every episode and then despise the end of every episode. I think that's <laughs> typically how this goes, where it's like, look, I told you guys beforehand, this is episode 100, we're only recording once, so I don't want you to feel like we have to be constrained to an hour, so that's fine. Typically, we do have to be constrained for an hour because these are hour-long shows, and we sometimes do two or other things are going on. So the middle of every episode, I really, really, really love, but the end is just so difficult. When it doesn't need to be. I think the worst <laughs> is when we, Jeff is like wrapping it up because he knows it's time to go. And then Andrew just sort of like <laughs> side swipes with like the most inane shit. And it's like, just save it. What are you doing? Just I remember save one it. where Andrew just out of, in the middle of the outro is like, you ever watch shit on Quibi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm back, guys. Derek's gone. I'm sitting on my desk oh, like wow. normal. So uh, the tattoo saga is over. I, I you have my full attention now. I apologize for being half in, half out for the first half. No, of the podcast. that was no, that's fine. That was great. That was a great bit. Yeah, I, I, was... I'm blown away. I really didn't expect no. that. I really just wanted to, <laughs> in in all seriousness, uh, all kidding aside, uh, I don't. I was talking about this with my therapist yesterday. I don't know how this happened. But this podcast has become, outside of my family, the most important thing in my life. And the last hundred episodes have uh, helped me immeasurably uh, in terms of uh, getting through the pandemic and also in terms of my own mental health outside of the pandemic. And uh, putting, putting it on my body, it seems like the easiest decision in the world to make because it's just been... Uh, it's, and also, I think it's... It, it, be uh i guess a little uh a little more personal i think it's maybe the best thing i've ever been a part of making and it's really nice to feel at almost 47 like i haven't plateaued and that we're still capable i'm still capable of of uh, contributing in a way that's uh gets progressively better as time goes on right like you don't want to feel like you don't want to realize you're on the back nine and you're 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 you're, you're retreating uh, and I and I don't feel like that every time I'm on this podcast, which is really nice. I yeah, I've been blown away recently at how my pretty much my favorite thing of every week came out of the middle of the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To the point where I'm like, wow, yeah. I'm uh, you know, not, not glad it happened, but just like, wow, I don't think we would have made this necessarily if it wasn't for the pandemic. I agree. know yeah. it's this yeah, it's this weird kind of conflict of probably. Well, not probably. I would definitively say like the most fun I've had working on anything and, and, and just getting to be part of something that I think is so special and fun um, being created due to a horrible event <laughs> that impacted the entire <laughs> world, impacted yeah. all of us personally. Um, I can't imagine what it would have been like going through those times without this show, like just being able to have a time every week especially when things were now we're kind of in a, a place right now where like we're kind of getting back in the swing of things and the schedule isn't always consistent but when we were in the heart of the pandemic knowing that every week i was going to get to have one hour to play with my friends um was yeah. so special and it's been so wonderful to have that time and yeah. also just like the audience has talked about um I, I interact with the audience quite a bit and i hear a lot of how meaningful it has been to have the space as listeners for them um, and it's just, I, I think, been equally important for us to have this space. So as much as they thank us for um, creating the show and doing what we do, we owe so much to them as well for supporting our show and allowing us to go these 100 episodes and, and have this space for ourselves. I, I literally had that conversation with someone recently where it was like, yeah, you know, really helped me through the pandemic. And my response was like, dude, me too. Th like, thanks so much for watching it. <laughs> yeah. I, I equally need it. <laughs> Yeah, Absolutely. we 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 certainly ha didn't talk about it in this content, uh, but I did go through an entire nervous breakdown during year one of the <laughs> Face Podcast, and yeah. like had to take a step away from my job and uh, go in through some intensive therapy. And uh, this 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 podcast was such an anchor 
in my life of positivity that I was able to forget about all of that for an hour and five mm -hmm. minutes or so uh, a week, which is honestly also why when when Andrew swipes in with a quibby comment or whatever and I see an opportunity to extend the podcast another 10 minutes <laughs> it's just like it's just like another 10 minutes of, of Shangri-La before you have to <laughs> Eric come on before we have to go back to the real world it's kind of true and uh, so really it's it's like when Eric wants us to stop recording it's he he wants to take that away from us it's yeah it's it's been it's been a wild journey and in fact that like it's just how it came together too and the fact that this show has worked as well as it has in itself is absurd. We've never had a production meeting regarding the show. Like just everything <laughs> about the creation and the process of making it is so absurd. Um, but I'm just so incredibly thankful um, for you guys and Nick and Eric has been so I knew obviously Jeff and Gavin before this. I didn't know Eric or Nick. And it's just been so much fun meeting them um, and getting to I don't know. This really, it's been nice. This whole experience has been wonderful. Um, and not to get too emotional on a podcast named <laughs> Face. Um, it's, just, it's, it's really, it's really meant a lot. So just thank you to everybody that has supported Absolutely. us in these 100 Definitely. episodes. 100 more? Yeah. <laughs> uh, at, at least. I, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to do for episode 1,000. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've already done the tattoo thing. What year will um, that be? Fuck. Oh man, uh, Eric! Eric, what year will that be? Yeah, this is. I think the thing that that the people don't realize is that this is the most creative, creative outlet I've ever experienced. Like it is unlike, and we've been doing this for nineteen. I've been doing this for nineteen years in other productions. This is certainly not the first or even the fiftieth production I've started, and uh, there has been nothing like it. Like it's it's it is unique in every way. And as I think Eric or Nick pointed out earlier, it's the f you know we we started this because of the pandemic. And in that process, we we had to move the entire company, the day job company, uh, to an online work work from home company. And so all of our productions ended up being work from home productions. And since the podcast, every one of them has gone back in person except for this one. This is the <laughs> only production that we do that's all remote to this day. But, you know, at some point, one day, Still maybe works. in Vegas, it could happen. <laughs> No, yeah, it's going to. No, yeah, that's we've committed. <laughs> Not in May, in November. Like we've committed, we're doing it. So we've committed. We've all said yes. We all. Andrew said yes. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, well, I, I said wait. Yeah. What? Don't. That's. I don't like the way that you said yes and then well. well yes, you've <laughs> committed. We've all committed. <laughs> yeah. I did. I don't like the way you said yeah. Yeah, it, uh, even the yeah well, is no. it's got like half a question mark okay. on the end of it. Let me clarify this because I 100% <laughs> committed. I didn't commit to a specific date, but I said I would do it and we agreed in October. I think I think that we've Okay, so I think we've I think we've looked at October and it might be early November. That's fine. Okay. Works okay, that's too. fine. You heard him say it. You heard everyone yeah. heard him say that's fine. I'm excited. I've never been to Vegas. It's going to be a great time. And I've never been to Vancouver Island. I mean, there's listen. We got bagels. We got crabs. <laughs> we got everything you need. When can we go to Vancouver Island? <laughs> That's a great question. When do you? When do you want? Like you're gonna say like as oh, soon as possible? No, I mean like no. Nah, I mean can I can't. You, I, like when can you actually like when? Not do you in want May. To? Not, <laughs> not in May. Not in, not in May. <laughs> What's the best time of the year for for N Nanaimo? You probably want to go in the summer. If for so like before if November, do, like, crabs uh, before uh, yeah. Either like this coming into the summer or the next year. You're giving us permission to come visit in like the next two to three months. You could visit whatever you want. I don't care. That's the, you're oh. welcome to come here whenever. You can visit whenever you want. I don't care. Are we yeah. going he, he to see you while we're there? <laughs> <laughs> of course. But I just meant the way Gavin said that was like, I'm gatekeeping the island in some way or that I don't want you guys here. I'd love for you guys to be here. By the way, Gavin and I just went to Seattle for like two days. <laughs> we were like 45 miles away from That's you. a great point. <laughs> you, you can literally take a ferry from Seattle to the island. Yeah, well, you could take a ferry. I don't want to travel. We were 99% <laughs> of the way there. We needed you to go 1% of the way. I'm not traveling. And you had no interest. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, not going to a different foot. country. <laughs> <laughs> if you were in Vancouver, I'd gladly go. I'd take a boat. i take a boat within Here's Canada. Here's why things happen. Here's why things really happening. Okay. While Andrew was peeping at the pissing woman, 
The police came in. They were trying to figure out what's going on. They confiscated his passport for two years. And I think he's waiting to get it back. I think something like that has happened. I think he's literally unable to travel. I actually was looking at my ID recently. He's got and I realized, bracelet on. I realized I have long hair at my ID photo. So there's one photo that exists of me with long hair. It exists. It's just on my ID. Oh, God. But yeah, I, I can travel. <sighs> I'm excited. Whatever you guys eventually come here. You can travel, but not till November. Not well, and leaving the country is a different matter. If it was a Canadian yeah. thing, we'd be gladly. gladly what different. is this what, heck file? What did you just send, Gavin? I'm trying to see. I've just realized these are like high efficiency photos. I'm not sure I can even do my slideshow. Wait, wait. So you're saying that the thing that you've teased for weeks is tied to a thing you cannot, we cannot Why see? Why aren't these JPEGs? Oh, man. Oh, boy. Do you want me to click this? Do you want me to... Uh, I clicked it. It didn't do a fucking I, thing. I, I clicked it as well. File I can't open in my inbox. I'm do you downloading... have my banking information now? <laughs> Download this file. Uh, let me see if I can save a freaking... Uh, it's just a screenshot. Oh, I got it to work. I got it to me. work. Okay. It's a picture of your phone. Nope. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's a picture of your phone. Meg is in the middle. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, watch. Phone? it's about... It's about eight or well, your watch, whatever. Eight eight forty nine, <laughs> but it okay. says fourteen thirty. So you can see him. I see that one image, but I had to download it and then look at it through preview on my Mac. Oh boy! But I'm I'll do it that way. I don't care. Am I frozen? No. no. Okay, my screen froze. I am trying to view this file <laughs> on a PC, and it takes me to the Microsoft Store, and it wants me to pay one dollar. <laughs> To download the thing so I can view the extension, and I will uh, outright refuse. It's not okay. this. I got to be honest with you. This picture of Gavin's hairy arm is not worth a dollar. <laughs> no. Um. Oh well, damn. So I see a watch. Tech rehearsal. Yeah. Fourteen thirty. Okay, it's you'll have to translate degrees. the pictures for the, for the other side. All right. Okay. Okay. It's Thirty-six degrees, fifty-nine percent on your battery. You want me to tell my fr shitty story? It's, I'd I don't know. love to hear this story. I, I, didn't wanna, I didn't mean to hype this up. I was, I was debating whether to tell this. I've never told anyone this story. I didn't even tell Meg until last week. And she was like, how have you never told me this story? And uh, I'll be honest, I've uh, just been mildly traumatized by it. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was funny. It might not be funny, all right? This might be loud. <laughs> what is wrong it with you? It can't be worse than lactating women. You got this. It's fine. I set the bar real low last week. Okay, so we're in Melbourne, right? Uh, mm -hmm, we're doing yeah. the AH Live tour. Jeff, you were there. Okay. Um, we, we got to Melbourne. I think it was the day of the tour. Of what the, year is The this? actual date. 2019. Okay, 2019. Uh, January 2019. So it's winter for us, but we were in Australia, so it's hot as balls. As you can see by my watch there, uh, 36 yeah. degrees Celsius, going to be about 42. I think it ended up being like 43, 44 degrees Celsius, which is like, I don't know, 112 or something. I don't know, Fahrenheit. It was hot as hell. It definitely was. I remember. Yeah. And, I, and also on my watch, you could see I've got tech rehearsal at 2.30. That's all I got to do that day. Woke up early, went for a stroll. We were in an area of Melbourne, I think, called St. Kilda, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, went for a little walk to a little park nearby the hotel, just sort of strolling around. I found a pier. So I thought, ah, oh, you know, walk down this pier, look out into the ocean. And uh, I saw that the water was amazingly still. And I was like, this can't, this surely can't be the ocean then. And then I looked on the maps and I realized it's not the ocean. It's just like a big, what do you call that? Like an inlet, like a big bay mm -hmm. by Melbourne. So it was like perfectly still water. And I thought, this is, I've never seen a body of water this big that looked so still. So then I thought, I'll take, oh, my thing's too powerful. Hold on. Are we going to move to Slack? Might have to move to Slack here. Okay. Go into right. Slack. I love watching you struggle with tech stuff. <laughs> it's a, it might be my favorite. Because <laughs> you're such a, little, a, such a mincy little prick about it usually when everybody else's stuff goes wrong. Oh, it's 136 megs. Ugh. And thank you, fell in love with just one. Hey! hey okay, was, well, okay yeah. I'm sending a video of me filming the very still water. <laughs> but as I was filming it, the wind picked up. And dist oh, Jack's here. Oh, is he listed? What is happening? Tell your story. <laughs> what is going on? Where do I see this video? <laughs> it's in Slack. Open this. Oh, Jesus. Now, as you is can this... see, the, the second I started filming the stillness of the water, the wind picked up, 
and uh, sort of destroyed the illusion of the still water. So now it's wind blowing everywhere. I'm like, oh man, think of the what's with the timing of that? Here's, here's my next video. Is this is this the end of the story that nope. they got windy? Okay. Uh, so now I'm like blown away by how sudden. <laughs> Eric said this is insane. <laughs> I'm blown away at how suddenly windy this is. My, uh, immediately, like, my AirPod blew out of my ear. I'm chasing it down the pier. I did this little video of my own face to... <laughs> okay. <laughs> None of the videos will play for me. It's just the still of the beginning and the audio. You got it. It's just Gavin. It's just Gavin. <laughs> so uh, your first face one... You're missing nothing. I'm nothing. I'm dead to Andrew. I'm serious when I'm saying that what you're seeing in like the first frame is just what the videos are. But uh, Gavin is making a case for the elimination of all visual aids going forward. <laughs> I'm setting the goddamn scene, right? All right. So it's too windy now. The wa the water is ruined. It's not still anymore. My AirPods are blowing out of my face. I'm just like, oh god, it's hot. It's like hot wind. It's not nice. I'm I'm thinking. I'm going to leave the pier now. So I'm right at the end of the pier. I'm starting to walk all the way back. And the wind is just fiercely blowing against me to the point where it's like I'm walking against a wall. And uh, the, the St. Kilda Pier has this interesting, like, curb thing going up it. Right? You see that on the picture? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's like some sort of water break or wait, I don't wait, know what well, it's for. Okay. In the map picture, we're, we're in the back there. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'll put it in the Discord. Put it in the Discord. There we go. Blam. Nope. <laughs> it's Wait, in the Slack. I gotta go back to the Slack. Okay. Yes, I see the pier. Okay. Yeah, you have to <laughs> alt tab. <laughs> I feel like I'm part of a choose your own adventure. <laughs> so I'm just, uh, I, you know, I'm like a child. So I'm walking back up the pier and I'm like jumping up on the curve and like hopping back down. But sometimes it, the wind is so strong, I can't like step up onto the curb. So I'm like stepping against the wind. I'm getting. I'm trying to step up one step, and I'm getting blown back like five steps. Uh, I've never really felt wind like it. All of a sudden, there was one other person on the pier. There's this sort of probably like fifty year old dude walking the other way, walking opposite, and I could see him coming in the distance. And uh, I'm I'm trying to step back up on this curb. I get blown backwards, but the wind is hitting him in the back, and suddenly this massive gust slams me backwards like 10 steps and it honestly looked like it lifted him up in the air it was like when Wee Man opened the parachute in front of that fan <laughs> he went flying <laughs> he went sailing towards me as I'm going sailing back and uh, completely ate shit over this weird curb to the point where he ended up slumped over it like his legs were on the wide side and his head was on like the narrow side <laughs> and uh I was like, oh, Jesus, and I'm trying to run towards him, but the wind is pushing him back. <laughs> and I was like, Joe, are you all right? And uh, he stood up, <laughs> and I guess his arm had caught that metal bit. Oh, and no. as he stood up, from like the inside of his elbow to like halfway up his bicep was just gaping open. And oh, I was like, Jesus oh, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. And I was like, do you want me to call you an ambulance? And he was like, no, no, and he's like, like, uh, like saying absolutely not. And I was like, no, you, dude, hold that close. It's like there's so much blood, and it's hang I can see into your arm. And he was like, no, 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 I don't need an ambulance. And and I'm like picking up my phone to call an ambulance. At this point, I realized no idea what the emergency number is in Australia. Later, found out it was zero zero zero, but that's good to know now. So I didn't know that. So I'm I started holding down the power button on the phone because that also lets you call emergency and th at that point my phone was going like whoop whoop as in to be like you're about to call emergency he heard that he's like don't do it and i was like <laughs> but you need you need like 20 stitches man and he's like he's like i'll, I'll go on my own and we start walking <laughs> we start walking back down the pier i'm behind him oh, and no. uh he's like struggling to hold his arm shut to the point where he stops and uh, I'm like, do you, do you need me to like, do you want me to take my shirt off and like wrap it around you? And he's like, he was like, no, no, no. And at that point, while he was facing me back down the pier and I'm facing up, up the pier, the wind kicks up again and it blew what felt like half a pint of his blood all over oh. me. What? In my, in my face, in my mouth, in my eyes, I'm suddenly... <laughs> 
I watched like a flow of blood come out of his arm and just take Jesus to the wind, Christ. splattered out like a big web, and absolutely went all over me. And I'm at this point, I'm just like, oh! and, 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 this, and I'm like, no, we gotta go, turn around, go, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm trying to do it without swallowing. Like we get to the end of the pier, and he's like, I'm good from here, and I'm like, you're not. Hold on, and I and I'm trying to like clean his blood out of my eyes and mouth. Oh and God. in the distance, like back through the park I walked through, I remember I saw a water fountain. So I sprinted over to it, leant over it. I'm like, I need to wash out my eyes and mouth, and I'm still not. <laughs> I'm still trying not to swallow his blood. So I'm hunched over the water fountain, the drinking fountain, holding down the button. But the freaking wind is blowing all the water away from my mouth. It's like blowing all around. I'm just like, I can't. I can't get any in my mouth. I'm like leant over. I'm like, eh, eh, and I can't. It's like completely dry, and the water's flicking, going all over the place. So I'm like shimming around in a circle, trying to block the wind, looking like an insane person, wash, trying to wash out my eyes and mouth and face. And then I, <laughs> I ran back to the end of the pier because I wanted to see what happened to this guy, and I can't find him, but I can find the blood trail. So oh I'm my god! <laughs> so I'm following these drips of blood, and it went to this little car park. So I assume he got in a car. Or like someone was waiting for him in a car or something because he immediately left and there was no more blood. And I spent 15, 20 minutes looking around to see if I could see him or like see if he'd passed out in a bush or something or see any more blood. Couldn't find him. And then uh, I sort of, this is where all the pictures have ended, by the way. <laughs> I'm just no longer oh providing God. visual aids. <laughs> and uh, I sort of thousand yards stared my way back to the hotel. And then, as I was walking up to the hotel, I was like, oh, I'm covered in blood. I'm, I'm covered in what might be a dead guy's blood, all like, from head to toe. <laughs> and I just, I just powered in the front door of the hotel, right past the desk, straight into the lift, took my shirt off. I was like scrubbing all the blood off in the bath. I took a shower and I ended up just crying in the shower <laughs> in a hotel oh my God. in Melbourne. My God. <laughs> and I was just, I ended up just so traumatized by it. I was like, I can't believe it happened. And I didn't really do a good job. Like I didn't really even help him. I hope he's all right. And, uh, I never told anyone that story that whole day. I just couldn't bring myself to like bring my mind back to that place. Oh, because I kept seeing like all the intense visuals of his yeah. open flesh. I'm not very good with blood. And oh, then we did like the Jesus. whole show. This was like the end of the show that night where we'd been doing a, we'd been chugging beer and running around playing Mario Kart. And at some point I just ended up lying on the floor of the stage, just reflecting why on the day I, as a whole. Why don't I have a shirt on in this fucking photo? <laughs> I don't know. It's the sim very similar to now. Yeah. So that was a, uh, that's my Australia story. That was Melbourne. Um, I feel like you encountered Anton Chigur on a fucking pier. Like that's the only, <laughs> like the unwillingness to get help when his arm is clearly like fucked. Dude, just the guy completely. was aggressively having none of my help. He was probably a criminal and he didn't want the cops to come. He didn't want the ambulance to come. They'd have to, they'd have to run his, yeah, he's probably like, it could have been Anton like. Anton Chigur. Yeah, Anton Chigurh, like just some like New York mafia guy who's hiding out in Australia. Like no police, no cops, no cops. I, I was like zoning in and out for the rest of that Australia trip of just like, oh God, I can't believe what happened. <laughs> I can't and it wasn't even that bad. Like it's not like I watched someone get hit by a car or something that would be much more worse. It was just the, the, the speed that he went from just strolling down the pier to severely injured for, from nowhere, just it like resonated weird with me. I was I felt so icky after that. I was like, oh, and then I was also worried that I, you know, had some sort of yeah. foreign bloodborne illness in my eyes and mouth. So there was that yeah. fear as well. I was like, do I do, do, I, do I go to a doctor <laughs> now? Like, do I tell people about this? I, I, I just didn't know what to do. So I, I ended up flying home with a bloody t-shirt. <laughs> you, you saved the t-shirt? Yeah, and I don't know if you can tell from the from the windy the windy video I posted earlier. Nice white T-shirt that was. Really showed all the blood, real good. Devin, I'm going to show you the perspective I got from your windy video. <laughs> this is what I saw. Just that and wind blowing. <laughs> this you didn't the, see the. <laughs> this, this was the other perspective I got. It was just this image with the audio of wind blowing. That was all the visual aid that I got. But I guess I do see the shirt. That is a very white shirt. It's a very white shirt, and as you can see from the picture of me on stage, I changed my shirt. You still have the shirt that's covered in blood? Um, I think I mainly mainly washed out. I okay. think it washed out because I, I don't remember it. I, That'd be wild. I, 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 honestly, my brain has been has never seen this as a funny <laughs> event. It's no. just tried to like repress it as much as possible. So I, 
that's why I don't know why I'd stopped taking photos. Like I should have just, it's very un me like to not document yeah. what happened afterwards. But well, you were traumatized. I mean, yeah. you were, you were, you were <laughs> experiencing trauma in the moment. That is an <laughs> in, you're right. It's not funny at all. It's like when I told the story about finding the old lady uh, who had fallen yeah. down in the woods <laughs> yeah. by my house. It's like, there's nothing funny about it. It's just a bizarre circumstance. And that's one of the craziest stories I have ever heard in my life. And I can't believe when you <laughs> teased it the other day, you said you were afraid it might be a sea story. Well, it's just not very funny. <laughs> It's like funny because it's not funny. It doesn't funny. have to be funny. It's insane. I, I told Meg and she was, she could not believe I never told yeah. her. Yeah. And uh, I was like, do you think it'd be good for f face? And she'd be like, oh, you've got to tell that on there. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> that also goes to show you how fucking precarious and fragile life is. Like yeah. a gust of wind took <laughs> that guy out. It was, I mean, in fairness, it was a, a uh, mass. It was the probably the biggest wind I've ever felt, God and I've lived damn. with you for ten years, <laughs> dude. That's a fucking. I don't know how you've held on to that story for since twenty nineteen. <laughs> yeah, that you haven't. I would be convinced that I was going to be a twenty eight days later zombie immediately yeah. as soon as I got covered in blood. Everybody would know. I'd be screaming. I would not handle that well. No, no kidding. I would have been like, don't touch me. I have AIDS. I have AIDS now. I, 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 <laughs> I, have, I have every disease. I have, hep, I have all the heps. I have hep A through Z. Just like, stay away from me. Quarantine me. And the, the thing about like, I, I wouldn't count it as like real trauma. It was like slightly traumatizing as an event, but it's not like I had PTSD from this event. Yeah. But it is interesting when you have those events and you think about it from very strange angles. Like a week earlier, that guy was just walking about, not knowing that a week from now, someone from America would come to Australia and ha and end up with his blood in his mouth. <laughs> For a week <laughs> earlier? How about eight earlier. minutes earlier? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that guy's relationship with the wind has forever changed. Every <laughs> single breeze. It's like this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, so he's like a wind chime as a warning device. Everybody oh. get down. I kept my eye, clo my eye closely on the local Melbourne news for the next week. Well, <laughs> it also just goes to, to show you, like, Australians are insane. And, like, in, in the coolest ways, like, they just don't give a fuck. That guy's like, ah, I'll wrap it up. He probably wrapped duct tape on it and went about his business. Yeah, and they have, I assume they have a, you know, free healthcare, like. Some form of healthcare. There are yeah. stitches and, and uh, antibiotics in Australia, for sure. Oh well, I, mean, I know a lot of people here don't like to call an ambulance because it costs them money. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not sure that's the thing there. I don't think you pay for an ambulance. I can't. I'm trying to just process what that would be. The plane, like everything. That is an insane event to happen. I, the, how about the fact that, like, three hours later, you and I were hanging out together, and you <laughs> didn't even didn't even cross. Like, I had no idea. I think that was, <laughs> was the show <laughs> because it was Melbourne. I think that was maybe the show where we filmed that Instagram video of us all singing Wrecking Ball or whatever, like the entire group. And we were all dancing around together. And like two hours yeah. later, you were bathing in somebody else's blood. <laughs> this is the imagery that, of what I, you're thinking every time you hear wrecked me. It's like, I saw a guy get fucking destroyed early. There's something just so funny about coming back to a hotel, hotel room covered in sweat and blood before 9 a.m. <laughs> it was so early that day. Ah. Uh. That's got to be one of the worst ways to walk into a hotel lobby because you yeah. definitely feel like you definitely feel like you're uh, like Jason Bourne in the Bourne Identity, you know, like they're just going to be like, uh, yeah, no problem, sir. Uh, and yeah. Calling Interpol right now. You said 9 a.m. is one of the worst times. What is a good time? I don't feel like there's a great time to walk into a hotel covered in sweat and blood. Uh, it's just not. You just can't sit down with a beer after that. It's too early, you know? Yeah. It's just I feel, see it's what you're like, saying. It's like the decompression of it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and I had a long time between that and the tech rehearsal. <laughs> um, that's it. Well, Gaff, thanks for telling that story. That's hands down one no of problem. the best stories in the history of face for sure. <laughs> one, one for regulation animation. One day, I am. Oh, I am Jesus! So, oh God! Oh my God! And by the way, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's what a terrible thing to go through. That's horrible. Thankfully, yeah. you know, you look back on it uh, fondly. I, I just hope he didn't die. I'm pretty sure he didn't. Um, and if, if he didn't, it's, uh, it's a crazy story. And you it. know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of you and I on the, sh on the ferry in Australia going from Sydney uh, over to 
I don't know what what what's that beach uh, that we always would go over to? Um, Manly Beach, not Manly Beach. Yeah, taking the ferry over to Manly Beach, and we're at the front of that thing, and you, you and I go to drink our water, and the wind picks up, and it shoots <laughs> the water all over those two girls in front of us, and it was oh my like God. we couldn't take a sip. They got eighty percent of our water instantly. <laughs> All through our mouths and into their heads and, and their hair, and they were horrified. It was like that, <laughs> so but with weird. blood. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Jesus. Man. Andrew, what was the thing that you were going to do that might have pissed off Jeff? I can't say because I'm going to do it one day. But it's just, <laughs> oh, okay. It's now is not the great greatest time to do it. <laughs> and we decided we're sticking with season four through episode 100. Yeah, I think yeah. season four barely started. I think well, season I, four was strong for a bit. Yeah, it's been a good season. Season four has been good so far. Yeah, it's uh, definitely been one of my favorite seasons. Yeah, I agree with Eric. Let's keep it rolling. Eric, you never figured out what year episode a thousand comes out. Uh, it would be so we're roughly at the two year mark. Uh, we started in June of 2020 and this will be coming out the day that you can listen to this is uh, uh, April 27th. So roughly two years per 100 episodes. So for so every, 18, yeah, so it, it you'd say roughly around that. Um, so we just have to, Jeff, you going to keep it, you keep it going for that long. I just mean like health wise, you got like enough, <laughs> like enough, like teeth that you can root canal for like 18 more years of this or whatever. Oh, eight. Sorry. I'll be honest. I zoned out for a minute. Uh, 18 cool, man. Years? Right yeah, on. Thank I can you do it. so much. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank Eric, you. Yeah, no worries. Said, like, right on. Yeah, appreciate it, dude. Yeah. Cool. 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 <laughs> Yeah, 18 years? Yeah, I can go. I can go 18 years. Here's what we should do. Even if we don't do this podcast for the next 18 years, say it stops at like 200, we come back 18 years from now and just do episode 1,000. Even if there hasn't been episode <laughs> 200 through 1,000. Dude, I'm going to be very disappointed if we stop at 200. We, I feel like we're building momentum every day. And we all the supplemental, supplemental content starting to come out. We're starting to film more, do more. We got MVP2 ahead of us. I Imagine what movies we'll be watching together by episode oh, 1,000. We should schedule MVP2. Yeah, we should. Big time. <laughs> Fuck. I'm all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Would there be more apples to eat? I think we should do a bo- like if we can get it. I think we should do a Bovril taste test, like we did with the oh, apple, absolutely. with the Cosmic 100%. Crisp taste test. If Andrew doesn't keep rejecting my shipment, maybe he'll be able to try it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check. I'll go to the mailroom as soon as we're done recording. I did hear. I did see somebody mention that it is. It does exist in Canada. Somebody was like, "I'm Canadian and I have it all the time." It do- yeah, I guess they banned it. They banned it. With Marmite and like some other thing because it didn't fit food standards in like 2015. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it doesn't. And then they had to like change the recipe or they, they, they like, you can buy it now, but there was a time in which it was banned in Canada. So that, I'm excited ca- to try. Canada hates shit. No doorknobs, no bovril. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, hey, hey, hey. This is fun. I'm excited for you to try it. I'm excited yeah. to try it. I can't wait. Maybe to get next it. episode. And definitely next episode. As long as it's. Not rejected. Well, Gavin, thanks for thanks for sharing an, a, an absolute one hundred of an of a story on episode one hundred, and <laughs> no uh, I I hope uh, I hope my tattoo bit played well oh, with you so, guys. Oh, uh, so good. I have never in all the six thousand tattoos I have, I've never recorded myself or tried to perform while getting one. <laughs> uh, it's not. It, yeah, it was great. Um, ribs, ribs are, uh, don't get a tattoo on your ribs. Just don't. I'll just say that right now. <laughs> you keep doing it then. I, I really, well, I'm, I'm running out of ribs. Andrew, I really appreciate you not unleashing whatever banana related fury or porta potty attack or whatever it was on me. Uh, look forward to that in the near future. Uh, and then any, it, 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 by that token, if you would like to contribute anything to 100, uh, now's your chance. I feel like I've I've contributed uh, <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> so many. Damn. That was that was mean, Jeff. So that was that was I was caught off guard. <laughs> you know what? I could. You know what? I could gladly <laughs> contribute to a hundred right now. Let's do the thing. I can just pull the trigger on the thing. I was trying to be nice, Jeff. I was trying to be a nice guy. <laughs> Let's go. Let's pull the trigger on this thing. Oh, man. You Thanks pull so the much for tuning I'm pulling in. pulling the trigger. And listening to episode 100 of all Bombs 100 episodes away. of Space, I'm assuming. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. Y'all take care. Oh, the uh, Eric like and review. What'd you say? Wait. Eric wrote something.
Oh, uh, whatever. Uh, by the time, by the time Gavin... this is out, Gavin will have done the RT podcast in 64 pieces of oh, clothes. Oh, great. That's exciting. Oh, yeah. How's that going, Gav? Yeah, I'm excited about it. Am I have doing you... the Donkey Kong tie? Are we, are we putting that on as the well? He- you don't need to. If you want, you can. You can use it if counts, you want. Just a headpiece. Piece of clothing. I like that yeah, I've worked at this company for 10 years, and then like twice in the same week, I'm being forced to wear two different red ties. Because <laughs> I just did a Hitman video where I wore one. <laughs> <laughs> that preview of you 15 years from now in the bald cap was really funny. <laughs> 15? <laughs> Five, maybe. <laughs> Uh, in all in all seriousness, uh, is there anything else we need to cover before we before? No, we I think we should do the outro. Stop. Okay, that was it. Uh, well, shit, that was a hundred episodes. Time flew. That's crazy. Can I, uh, can I actually, I, I do say? have a question. <laughs> what the fuck is <laughs> why this why sucks? No, I just quick, it'll be quick. Is a football <laughs> a ball? This is the thing I was trying to figure out. Uh, in what way could it not? Be, in what way could it possibly not be a ball? Well, right, okay. Well, so on. let me give hold you a more on, specific. Hold on. I was because it's like I didn't know if it was a thing. You know how like a strawberry? It says berry in the name, but it's not a berry. Uh, I was wondering because this thing. Do you do you ever throw a Nerf vortex, Gavin? Yeah, the little whistly thing. Yeah, like whistle is one of my favorite. If I was I was thinking about like what are the greatest balls of all time. And I think the Nerf Vortex might be number one, but I didn't know uh, if it would be considered a ball or not. Is that a ball? A, it's a football. More of a foam dart. Do you think it's a foam dart and not I'd a football? It's pretty darty considering the flights on the back. B- but the movement, like the throw, it's a football product. Huh. Which then made me wonder, is a football in itself an actual ball or does it, does it not fall well, in the ball category despite the name football? I mean, it's got the name ball in the it, ball. Is but in so the does name. strawberry. But, but according to uh, Wikipedia, which is never wrong, a football is a ball inflated with air used to play one of the various sports known as football. So apparently uh, it is, yes, a ball. OK. Well, then I would I would go with the Nerf Vortex as the greatest ball overall. What was the best thing on Quibi? Uh, I only watched a show. It was this horror oh, yeah. one with um. Uh, what was the 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 fucking? He was. I never saw the Amazing Spider Man. He played the Green Goblin in the Amazing Spider Man. What was his name? You know who I'm talking about? I think his name. He played Andrew in the movie Chronicle as well. I don't know his name. He was in it, and I believe the female lead was the woman that was in the guest and uh, it follows. I don't know her name either. Is the the only woman thing I from It Fo- Oh, what is her name? She was like in a bunch of really good indie movies at the time, and I don't uh, feel like I've seen yeah. her in anything in years, uh, which is surprising. She's great. She's great in It Follows. She's great in The Guest. According to the dictionary, <clears throat> uh, the, the definition of a ball is a solid or hollow spherical or egg-shaped object that is kicked, thrown, or hit in a game. So uh, egg-shaped, I think, fits. Yeah, egg-shaped, fits, uh, I think, is fair football. with a yeah. football. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Huh. Okay. There you go. Well, what's the name of the guy from The Amazing Spider-Man that was the Green, green Goblin? What's the, his the, name? Isn't Willem Dafoe? That's not the, the one that was with Andrew Garfield. The yeah, Amazing Spider-Man. I know the Green those. Goblin was in that. I think he is. I thought I it was Lizard Man and... Uh, Hold on, I'm looking. Electric Man. Uh, I think the Green Goblin's in that. He was oh, in, uh, oh, oh. It's... Uh, what is this guy? What is this dude's name? Uh, that guy. Uh, did, yeah, Eric just posted a photo. That guy. Oh, What's okay. his name? Dane DeHaan. Dane DeHaan. Dane DeHaan. There we go. Dane DeHaan. Thank you. Can I, can I make a complaint with you, Gavin? This sucks. Oh. What's this happening? Thank you. That's what I was about to complain about. Why haven't you ended this, Eric? Why haven't you yelled at us? Because this is just going on. Guys, you, thank you. Failing- 100 episodes of this podcast, and it seems like <laughs> it's never going to end, is it? What's the next sports-related thing that's going to be going on? Will we see what's going on with my hubby's bagels? I can't wait to eat Bovril. The, all this and more continuing in season four of the F- Face Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, leave a rating, subscribe, go grab your friend's phone and subscribe for them and make sure you listen on their phone as well. It'll help everyone out. Thank you so much and goodbye. I, I think you're supposed to drink Bovril, not eat it. This sucks. Point goodbye. Of, point goodbye. Of, end it. Goodbye. Point of clarity. Hey guys, minor league fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of face once again the guys haven't recorded yet so here's some predictions for the next week's episode let's talk about balls who's the previously on guy jeff experienced bovril 
Panton talks bagels, Gavin has a wasp problem again, and once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.